watch and burn. Hey everyone. So tonight I would like to discuss um, the substitute. Now, I, I don't mean to smile when I say that. Tom Berenger's in this and Ernie Hudson's in this and Raymond Cruz is in this and um, uh, William Forsyth is in this, Louise Guzman's in this, Richard Brooks is in this. So this is a, an incredibly stupid movie that is stacked with incredibly talented actors. And of course, this spawned, I believe, four sequels, all of which star the recently deceased Treat Williams, who unfortunately, a couple days ago in June, I believe it was around June 8th or June 9th, 2023, he was killed uh, in a motorcycle accident. He was 71, and that sucks, but nonetheless, uh, I don't, like again, I don't mean to smile, but it's just, the substitute movies, are they're fun, but God, are they dumb. So Tom Berenger's girlfriend, she's one of the uh, few teachers at this rough, sort of tough inner city school that really cares about her kids. But at the same time, she has run afoul of the local gangster played by Mark Anthony. And so him and his friends decide to kneecap her when she's going for a jog. And so Tom Berenger <laughs> somehow, I don't know how these mercenaries are able to do this, but he inserts himself in the school as a substitute. Wow, imagine that. Um, a substitute teacher for her class and he really starts to care about the kids and he's digging deep and there's a really touching scene where it's revealed that Mark Anthony who of course is the head gangster he can't spell the best and it's it's kind of sad and <sighs> but this movie's dumb because he pitches the idea of going into this school for no money to all of his mercenary friends like like uh, like Richard Brooks and William Forsyth and uh, Luis Guzman and Raymond Cruz um, to kind of clean the school up and maybe there's some money on the back end because there's a lot of drugs and kids with jewelry and shit and somehow the, they all just decide to go along with it except of course for William Forsyth who's solely motivated f through the gaining of money um, he takes off he's like fuck this and he, he's like I got him I got a profit and so the next morning, Luis Guzman is some sort of phone guy who's at the school, like that. And then Richard Brooks is just in the school as a security guard, like that. Because apparently that's how it happened back in the 90s. If your girlfriend was kneecapped, you could just insert yourself and your mercenary friends into the school where she teaches and deal with the bad guys that did it to her effortlessly. Like, see how I snapped? Done. And yeah, I mean, I liked how, I think my, like one of the, the more serious things that I can say about this film that I really liked was that despite the very obviously ridiculous plot, it's handled, it's handled with such intelligence and such honesty. And because of that, you can't help but not at least love this movie partly because Behringer and company are playing this pretty straight faced. The rest of us are kind of laughing at it because it's ridiculous. But as far as the, the, the writing is concerned and the acting is concerned, this is played as straight as The Godfather was. And in that sense, it can be respected. This is probably the only one that can get away with sort of having some sense of emotional intelligence because from part two to part five, oh, part five is about some white supremacist group in some military boarding school or something. Fuck. And so I really like too how Ernie Hudson, who traditionally plays a really strong and resilient good guy, he always kind of like he's the he's the the moral center of the, uh, usually everything that he's in. Um, in this, he's the bad guy. So I thought that was fun and sort of exciting to sort of flip his... Uh, typecast I said as he's been typecast over and over again as playing like I said the stoic good guy as being the sort of ruthless bad guy who's in bed with Mark Anthony and the rest of the gangsters I shouldn't probably talk about a student being in bed with his students I probably shouldn't have said that there's no fucking they're not really in bed what else did I want to say oh my god this movie is obviously because it came out in 1996 I don't need to point out how mid 90s this movie looks the music it is 100% hip hop, and unfortunately, it hasn't aged the best. I mean, Mac 10's on here, Master P's on here, Organized Confusion's on here, and they, the songs all sound dated, like cemented, carved in stone, that they're clearly from the mid 90s. 
So that's unfortunate because again, when I'm watching this movie or, or when I've watched this movie with other people, whenever like one of the tracks kicks in to show like the badass gangsters that go to the school, everyone sort of giggles because it sounds like the mid nineties, like it's like fucking, you know, dangerous minds or some shit. So that wasn't the best either, but I do, I, I love Tom Berenger. Tom Berenger has this way of playing, even when he's playing a more caring and compassionate character, he's still really imposing and he's still really scary. Like whenever I think of Tom Berenger, it doesn't matter what movie he's in, he's always kind of playing this sort of military type dude and he, he does a really good job of being that scary. Like in Sniper with Billy Zane, he was scary, silent and stoic vicious and of course i mean jesus platoon i mean he played a raging sociopath in that and in this he's still the same raging sociopath except he's in love with his girlfriend and he cares about the kids and he wants them to get an education and he doesn't want their kids to end up in gangs so it's a little dumb or by a little dumb i mean a lot dumb but it is a lot of fun and I love the scene when he's in the library and he starts fucking throwing the books at them and like he's taking them out sort of with the books. He's like, here you go, you could be reading some Shakespeare. Boom, he's like, Romeo and Juliet. And he cracks the guy in the chest. I thought that was fun. But yeah, this movie is dumb, but it's really good. It's really good. But God, is it dumb. It's good, but it's dumb. So yeah, look, I am gonna go. So thank you so much for hanging out with me while I discussed the absolutely perfect 1996 film. And perfect. I fucking said perfect. And that is The Substitute, starring Tom Berenger and Ernie Hudson, Mark Anthony, and a bunch of other people. Like always, if you like this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. But please, most importantly, don't forget that the world is a better place because you are in it. I'm going to go. Have a good night.